What's up guys, Porta here bringing you the best OBS Studio settings for streaming. Recently I've been looking around a lot for the best settings for myself to stream with. I've run into a few bumps in the road seeing as a lot of videos are either outdated in OBS Classic or have a difference in opinions. The settings I'm running now are working the way I was hoping they would and that's why we are going to go through them today and hopefully they could help you too. Let's get right into this. First let's go to File, then Settings. This will now take you to the General tab. We're going to run through this section pretty quickly because it's not the main point of the video. So as you can see in this tab, you're going to pick your language, then you're going to pick your theme. I run dark because I feel it's easier on the eyes. Next you'll see the output section. This section is really based on your preference, but I personally choose to show the confirmation dialog for starting and stopping streams. And I do not have the box checked for automatically record when streaming because it will take a little more CPU power and it's not something I really need to do. Next you'll see the snapping section. I personally have all this checked so that it's easier to align things when I'm setting up the stream. As for the last two sections, they are not something we need to touch so we're going to skip that and move on to the next part. Let's move on to the stream tab. Here you will choose your streaming service. I use Twitch but you could choose whichever one you would like to stream to. If you choose Twitch you will see the option to select a server. I would recommend using the one closest to you however it is not always the best option. If you look online, there is a program that will allow you to see the strength of each server for you. The last thing in this tab is the stream key. You can find that by going on Twitch to your dashboard, then to the stream key section, and all you have to do is copy and paste it in here and you're ready to go. Let's move on to output. This is the main part of the video. This is where all the settings will be that really help your quality. As you may notice, this part is grayed out for me because I am currently recording through OBS. However, I can lead you through the settings that are grayed out. For audio track, I have mine on 1 because that is where my audio is going to. For the encoder, I personally use X264, which is heavily based on CPU, but you may also have the option of QuickSync or NVENC. I don't know much about QuickSync, so I'm not going to touch on that one, but as for NVENC, that one is using your graphics card, so it will save a lot of CPU if you're running high in that category. While testing the different encoders, I did notice that NVENC is slightly worse in quality, but if you need to save CPU, it's not that big of a difference where it's really going to hurt you. However, I do notice it myself. Like I said though, I personally run X264. It seems to give me the best quality and that's what I'm looking for. After that, you're going to want to have this box checked. Then we're not going to want to have a rescale output. We'll get to that later on in the video. Then we're going to move down to rate control. For this setting, you're going to want to have CBR. That is a constant bitrate, which means it's going to try to maintain whatever you have your bitrate set at. As for the bitrate, many people run either 2500 or 3500. As you see here, I choose to run 3000. The max for Twitch is 3500, so you don't want to go above that if you're streaming to Twitch. I choose to run 3000 as it seems to be the best place for me without any problems. If you don't know, bitrate affects your quality. The higher number you go, the better quality you will get. After that, we're going to keep this box unchecked. Then we're going to move on to keyframe interval. The default for this is 0, but Twitch recommends that you use 2, so that is what I have it set at. I personally don't know this setting that well, so I'm just going to go with what they recommend. Next up is CPU usage preset. As you see here, it says the higher you go, the less CPU will be used. By that it means if you go to ultra fast you will be using the least amount of CPU possible. If you go to placeboo you will be using an extremely high amount of CPU. The default for this is very fast and I would recommend either keeping it there or going to faster or fast if your computer can handle it. I run faster even though I could run fast I just play a lot of games that require a lot of CPU. Next up is profile. Most people use main and that is what I would recommend to use as well. As you may notice in the other parts of this video, I did have high selected as my profile, but after doing some more research, I now know that main is the best option for you. We're not going to set anything for tune, we're not going to check this box, and we're not going to put anything here. Next up, we're going to move to the audio tab of output. In this section, the default is 160. I personally raised all of mine to 192 because I want to get the best quality possible. Now let's move to the audio tab. For this part, the default for sample rate is 44.1 kHz. I personally changed mine to 48 kHz because I want to get the best quality. After that, you want to keep channels at stereo. Then for the next options, it is based on what you are using. For desktop, you want to select your desktop device. For microphone, you want to select your microphone, and so on. You do not need to change anything down here unless you would like to. It is all personal preference. Finally, we're going to go to the video tab. 
On this page, you're going to want to have your base resolution as whatever resolution your monitor is. For example, mine is a 1920x1080p monitor, so I am running 1920x1080. For the output resolution, you are going to want to change this to whatever you want your output to be. I like to stream in 720p, so mine is set at 1280x720. After that, you're going to see downscale filter. Unfortunately, I cannot open the category because I am recording, like I said, but I could tell you what they are. The first option you do not want to go with. After that, you have 16 samples and 32 samples. I personally run 32 samples, but the default is 16 samples. This setting will also help improve your quality. I personally go with the best because I want the best. Only do this if your computer can handle it though. If not, choose by cubic. And last but not least, we have our FPS. For this setting, you either want to choose 30 or 60. I personally want 60 frames per second because I play a lot of shooters on my channel, and that will give me the best motion. One thing I want to state before we end this video, if you are not a partnered streamer, people will not have the option to change the quality of your stream while they are watching. They will automatically have to watch your stream in whatever you are pumping out. By that I mean if you are putting on a really high quality stream, some people may not be able to view it because their internet speeds do not allow it. So you want to have good quality but don't make it too insane where people can't watch or you're just hurting yourself. That's all we're going to touch on for today. I hope you enjoyed. I hope I helped. If I did, please remember to comment, like, and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Peace.